All right guys, so I finally got all of my parts that I need to replace and it's actually time to make this hood work again. So in my previous video, you guys may recall I was using this uh, lifesaver here from Vim. Um, just check out my previous video if you guys want to see the part number. Um, long story short, these are half cut bits and this is ultimately what you're going to need to take the hood latch out in order to open this hood back because uh, obviously from the time I recorded the video till the parts came I needed to drive the car around so uh, naturally the hood is stuck on me again um, as a refresh you're going to need to remove your kidney grill so you can see here the brackets or the the teeth that ultimately hold on to the hood there's a few of them this one as you can see that once they get a little bit older they get a little brittle but there's one, two, three, four, five, six teeth that ultimately grab on. Um, unfortunately, if your hood's stuck, you can't take it off nicely. So what I recommend is you get a pick, like a 90 degree bend pick, and maybe a screwdriver and just try your best to take it off slowly. The key word here is slowly because if you just go fast, you're gonna break all of them and you won't be able to reuse your kidney. I think I should be able to, so um, that's my advice for you guys. Um, another piece of advice is, considering how old these are, if you heat them up a little bit, maybe that could also help. Um, I'm in a colder climate in Chicago, so it sometimes can be a little bit tough to take these off without them breaking. What you're gonna need to do now is take that half cut bit T30, and you're gonna wanna take off these two fasteners right here. Just take your time and uh, be patient and that should release this side of the hood. This is the driver's side. Alright, so now that you took off the two screws, you guys can see the screws are now missing. Uh, you should be able to lift up on the hood. Um, in my case, this latch is uh, hit or miss, so I should be able to just lift the hood up completely right now, but um, I'll let you know in a second. Because I was able to loosen just that one, and like I said, this hood latch here is in questionable condition, I'm actually able to now loosen my hood. And I'm back in business. Here's the... Uh, place where that latch was removed from. You can see the two cutouts. Um, that's the other side. And then you can see here how because we removed that fastener this is still in here. Obviously on this side it didn't stick because I didn't have to remove it. In some applications if you can get lucky enough uh, zip ties here to lock everything in place can get you by temporarily. Uh, unfortunately for me, mine was too far gone, so the zip ties didn't work. Uh, you could get lucky though. Anyways, I'm going to remove these now. You can see here. Mine is just completely off. You can see how it's broken there. Maybe it'll focus. There you go. You can see how it's broken right there. So today we're going to end up replacing everything. In the process, if you want to release this little latch here, just simply pull to mimic what it would be like to pull on the latch. It's really hard to do with one hand, but basically just pull on this thing towards the windshield and you'll be able to release the latch. These are the three parts we're going to change. First one right here. 
This is the one that's going to go from your interior cabin to the first connection junction that I showed you that's broken. From there, this is the connection junction. This connection junction is ultimately going to go underneath your driver's headlight into your first hood latch. And then from there, you're going to go from your hood, first hood latch to your second hood latch. All it is is just a simple cable uh, that once you pull the main latch, this one just comes with it. So I went with all genuine BMW. You don't have to. There's actually aftermarket ones, but quite honestly, I don't trust them, uh, especially for something like this. It's not the easiest of jobs. Um, a lot of tight spots. The last thing I want to do is have to redo it over again. I did also buy new latches. Well, new used, but they were in really good condition. They do sell aftermarket ones again, as well as genuine ones. Uh, keep in mind that the new ones are not uh, tapped, so you're going to probably either do it with a tap and die or you're just going to have to uh, re-tap them with the fasteners, but I can't promise that's going to work. Um, since I'm on, on the desk here, I'm also going to replace my windshield washer pump that went bad. I'm going to replace the hood struts too because those have been starting to go. And also uh, I'm going to replace the hazard, hazard light. Alright, so I forgot to hit record, but what you're going to have to do now is remove the headlight, the over radiator cover, so this guy, remove your air intake so you can get a little bit more access, remove your, in your uh, headlamp, the under piece that goes in there, try and put something down so you don't scratch your bumper, um, undo the latch here. Kind of see how it's all connected here. Uh, this is where it's going to get tricky because ultimately this latch has its connection points behind here. Um, how you get there uh, is not easy, so be patient, start taking things apart slowly, and uh, we'll just go from there. I did my best here to show you guys ultimately where the latches are coming in and out of. So where my finger is right there, that's where the latch goes for the passenger side. And this is the latch for the driver's side. 
So I pulled it out for you guys to kind of get a little bit of an understanding of what's going on here. Obviously, I'm sure there's probably a much more elegant way. Uh, this is how I did it. If you want to do what I did, it's a lot of work, but at least I uh, know I did it right and I didn't really break um, anything in the process. Yeah, there's a few brittle parts here and there, but um, I'd rather take my headlights and bumper off knowing that everything was replaced versus just not. So, anyways, here's the back side. You can kind of see right there where my thumb is. That's where the metal part of the, the latch cable goes. So we're just going to pry off this rusted piece. Actually, I don't even need to because I have new ones, but if you were still reusing these, you would just pry off here, pull out from here, replace this whole unit, and then same thing here. As you can see, there's two here. So this left one goes to your passenger side. This one goes over there where it's mounted. And then it connects over to the uh, interior latch. All right, get your new latch now. And you can see how nicely it uh, works compared to my old one. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lubricant in here just to reduce the friction. It's, uh, it's safe to use for plastics, so um, actually Super Lube is the best. I just can't seem to find it right now. Now what you're going to want to do is take this, as you can see it's got a, a T shape, take the T, put it in the hole right here, and there's a, uh, there's a small little sliver right here. Hopefully the camera is focused on it. So it's going to go in here like this. Sorry, this is really hard to do with looking at the camera too. So slide it in, slide it across, and you're in. Like just like that. Okay? And then you're gonna work that all over onto your other latch. Do the same thing here, just just a little bit of lubrication. going to do the exact same thing. Um, if you're taking out your old one, use that as a perfect example. Otherwise, if you just want to reference this video, all you got to do is exact same thing we did on the other side. Match the loop up and in. Just like that. I'm pulling on one and you can see both are activating. All right, next, you're going to want to grab the other piece. This is the actual piece that broke for me. So this is the one that I really needed to change. But since I'm in there, might as well replace all of them. And the same concept here. In the hole. Slide it through the channels. And you're in. Just like that. You see the two pieces there? Perfect. Now, just slide everything back in.
Just want to let you guys know there's an easier way than what I showed. Um, in hindsight, this is what I would have done, but um, I just kind of went at it without really thinking as smart as I should have. Uh, anyways, it's this panel right here. Um, here, hold on, zoom out. It's this panel right here. Um, there's the part number. Right there. Um, there's basically four fasteners. Um, there's these plastic little holding pieces with the screws. Once you take those out, that gives you full access to then take everything out like a normal person um, instead of doing what I did. But uh, at the end, it still did what I needed to. Um, you can see how there are the hinges. All you'd have to do is just slide them out and not do what I did. But um, I did what I did. Anyways, um, all you need to do then is just remove this one screw right here. It's an external Torx. And that's all that's holding the bumper reinforcement in place. You can take the bumper reinforcement off with the bumper instead of doing what I did again. But um, either way works. Um, but this would be a lot cleaner and easier for you guys. All right, so I didn't really record a lot of the stuff in between steps. Um, honestly, it's extremely tedious and involved. Um, the general story is here, what you're gonna wanna do is roughly in order, take your headlights out, start loosening up this top brace, top cover, whatever you wanna call it. Loosen up all the plastic rivets here. You're gonna to wanna to take off the bumper. That's the way I did it at least. Um, if you're missing a bunch of the plastic inside of here, you may just be able to manipulate the, whatever is left and do your best to remove. I couldn't. Um, my plastic was actually real stiff and I was just afraid I was gonna break something. So I took the bumper off. Um, I just showed you previously a more efficient way to do it. There's actually underneath here, there's two, two holes. I don't know if you can see that there. There's two holes right there, one there and one there. What you'll see is doubtful, but there's an external Torx in there, and that external Torx is ultimately what's going to let you fasten your bumper to the support brace uh, behind it. Once you're done with that, put your headlamps back on, put your bumper back on, put your front lip back on, and then Put your under trays back on to lock everything. Make sure you don't forget your fog lights and your horns and on the passenger side, the uh, temperature sensor. All right, so everything's pretty much back together now. Uh, I was just putting the wheel wall liners in. Um, that was pretty much the last touch to tie the whole bumper together. Um, what the next steps are, just start buttoning everything up. So like I said, this and this have now been routed through the latches. This main latch, primary latch, is now routed all under here. And then eventually it comes out. There are two little cantilever clips here that snap into the body. Make sure this door is closed, otherwise you are prone to those ears popping out so make sure that's closed. Um, one thing I made an amendment to my plans for today um, I was going to replace this cable but uh, I chose not to. Um, honestly there's nothing wrong with it it's it's actually of the three the only one in good condition um, and I'm running a little bit short on time but if you wanted to replace it as this is one of the most common ones that need replacing um, all you need to do is basically continue on here so this would be open pop this guy out there's a little grommet 
right there. There's a little grommet right there. You're going to then want to remove this electrical box and you're going to just follow that all the way down into your cabin. So basically remove this and it just goes into your cabin from here through the firewall. And then from there you just remove this guy right here. There's a little screw. This whole mechanism will pop out and you basically just replace the existing wire with that. Um, it's pretty straightforward. My recommendation to you is um, cut the old one out and fish it through. That way uh, you don't have to worry about this grommet. Just fish everything through from here on. Put a bunch of electrical tape, pull it through into the cabin, and then the new portion, you only have this much that you need to play with so you're not uh, rustling through the firewall and everything. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of hard for me to get an angle, but basically it's, it's down there for you to uh, fish through the cabin. almost zero effort to pop the latch and that's attributed to the new cables and in my case two new latches so if you want I would also add uh, some grease here on this little cam profile uh, just to aid in this uh, lever here I would also grease these guys up and uh, hopefully it lasts you another 16 years um, that's pretty much all there is to it. It is not an easy job. Um, you need patience, a lot of time, and uh, skinny hands. But in the end, uh, a working hood is extremely important, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a necessary job, and frankly, this is something that anyone can do. You just need to have the patience, the time, and the place to do it. Um, I don't think this is a dealer job by any means, I think anyone can do it with the right tools. So with that said, um, that is the last part of the replacement for the latch and the cables. I'm going to continue to work on the engine bay now by replacing the hood struts uh, since they are quite old. Shock side up. Until it clicks in place. Easy as that. Alright, so this is all you need to do basically. There's this little clip right here. 
Just get a skinny screwdriver flathead underneath to basically release these ears. Just like that. And you just pop it right out. All you want to do left now is to install the grills and your front end is done. Just take care to be very slow and everything will ultimately sit in place. Alright, so we're going to replace the washer fluid pump now. It's located right back here. Uh, some symptoms are either just whining with no flow, or in my case, no noise at all. The pump has completely died, uh, so we're going to replace it pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to be replacing it with an OE Continental pump. Uh, bought it from FCP Euro. Highly recommend you shop through there. Uh, only the best parts. Take your 10 millimeter. Normally, it'd be nice if the uh, fluid was lower, but uh, I was stupid enough to fill it right before it died. There's an electrical connector. Take that off. At this point, you just start panicking because there's fluid going everywhere. Do your best not to lose any of it. Put the door back on. After you've thoroughly cleaned up the mess you made, Time to put it all back together now. Don't forget to put the electrical connector on. All right, and that was it. Clearly we got power again through that pump, and I can finally use my windshield again. All right, so we're gonna replace the hazard and lock button. Uh, mine are completely done. They don't respond to anything. So I am gonna take this out and replace it with the new one. You don't have to be as brute as I am. Uh, but considering I am not going to be using this again, there's really no point uh, to be gentle. So you could technically remove this whole panel and this panel to get to this, but um, as you can see, the it's working now, but that's because the button technically was not making contact with the switch. Here's the new one, just reverse order, plug it right in, and it's as simple as plugging it and snapping it in. That's it. Another thing that needs changing is the driver's main window. 
uh, switch here. I don't know if you can tell, but the left side, unfortunately, is broken. So I was lucky enough to lucky enough to find a switch on Amazon. Um, it's not perfect, but it beats paying like 50 bucks to get a new window switch. So all you got to do here is pop this guy open. Take your number two Phillips. Slide it forward and back a little bit to jiggle it. To remove the window switch module, it's basically just a little cantilever snap right here. Just to press that and the whole thing will slide out. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but pretty much the reason mine's broken is because of that little piece of plastic there on the end that's basically sheared off. So all you're going to want to do now is replace it. So what I actually decided to do after I pried it out was, um, considering I rarely use my rear windows, um, and the piece that I got from Amazon is slightly different, enough to drive me nuts, uh, maybe not for other people, but you can kind of see how the Amazon one uh, just has a slightly different stamping of the window. Um, that's going to drive me nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just swap these two buttons over since I don't ever use this button, but I use this one a lot, so that way I can have up and down contact at all times. Again, just get a really skinny flathead and pry the buttons up. Now I'm going to swap the good side, so now I have up and down lock. I'm going to take my other one and just swap it to the back. Still works, but you know, it's not perfect. Like I said though, I won't be using this button a lot, but in your case, if uh, you want and you don't care about the printing, just replace it with this guy from Amazon. Or buy a new module, as you'll see they're pretty expensive, so if you have the appetite, get it. If not, maybe get lucky and find something on eBay. Otherwise, that's all it takes to switch the uh, buttons off. Installation is just the reverse of removal. Slide it in until it catches. You can see it's not going anywhere. Make your connection for the module. 